Good quality healthcare for Nigerians should not only be for the rich as being the outcry of the masses. As an important element of national security, public health not only functions to provide adequate and timely medical care, but also tracks, monitors, and controls disease outbreaks. The Nigeria healthcare system has suffered several infectious disease outbreaks year after year, be it Ebola, be it Lassa fever. Our inadequate healthcare system has been further exposed by this current pandemic called COVID-19. We're in a country of over 200 million people. We had less than 200 functioning ventilators as of March 2020, whether public, whether private medical institutions. Our Vice President, Yemi Osibajo, recently spoke about healthcare reform bills mandating free healthcare for all Nigerians, where in fact, our existing healthcare bills have never been properly implemented. Free sounds nice, right? Free, someone must pay for it. In 2010, there was a 1% consolidated revenue of our annual budget signed into law to be appropriated to healthcare, and this has never been fully implemented. In fact, our same VP promised in 2018 that the president of Muhammad Buhari, even though it was a good luck Jonathan Bill, will implement for the first time the 1%, and it was not done. Healthcare is not cheap, someone must pay. So let's put it in context. United Kingdom has 67 million people. The annual budget for healthcare, 140 billion US dollars. In Canada, where I'm speaking to you from, we have 37 million people. Our budget, 200 billion US dollars annually. United States, biggest spender, with a population of 330 million, spends 3.6 trillion US dollars for their healthcare annually as of 2019. These are the statistics. Now, in 2020, there's a pandemic going on and they plan to increase it to $8.6 trillion. Guess what? Nigeria, we have a miserly 20 billion US dollars for a population of over 200 million people. And in fact, this health budget has been further cut this year. And if you're lucky, you get the full release of that money when in fact we never see up to 50% of it, according to all the health institutions across the country. We know that access to good quality healthcare is usually a function of wealth and status, but these meet <laughs> certain roadblocks when international and local borders have been locked down. The irony of a status government official returning from Germany to Abuja, then flying to Lagos for treatment for COVID-19, which he imported to Nigeria from Germany, only to be flown back from Lagos to be buried in Abuja cannot be lost on us. It will be actually laughable if it wasn't so tragic. What were his options? Of course, he couldn't go back to Germany, but why not Abuja? Why Lagos? Is Abuja not the federal capital territory? What happened to our almighty national hospital? What about the state house hospital? Where in a year, I think a couple of years ago, our First Lady said not even Panadol she could find in that clinic where billions of Naira have been appropriated. So my advocacy today is about the need to tackle the problem of our decaying healthcare systems, to talk about the inadequate funding of our health budget, the implementation of that said budget to all aspects of our healthcare, be it medical surveillance, intelligence for pandemics, be it training of, of staff, be it down to the primary health centers, which you know are the bread and butter of caring for the nation via health schemes. You can talk about state or national health insurance schemes. You know, let, let, me, let me talk, because we, we discussed this a little bit last week. Um, and the thing is this, we are treating two things that come to mind. Yeah. We, we see this COVID thing, as she said, Rika Rick said, has exposed the fragility or the non-existence of infrastructure that we have as far as health, uh, healthcare is concerned. Mm. If you say fragility, it's as if it's there. Yeah, there is non but, but, but the other thing too that is, is important. So we see COVID. I mean, there's a lot of spending, you know, um, private companies are donating billions of Naira to it. We see people like NNDC and other yes. government agencies. Yeah. I'm using this as a, as a, as a vehicle to, 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 to siphon money. But it seems as if all of our health care is around COVID, but we have bigger problems. And so, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's not COVID. COVID, COVID is just one thing. 
Um, so there's no, there's no thinking. There's no thinking, there's no planning. And, and just yesterday, we heard in the review of the budget that the government slashed 40-something percent off, off the health, the health the budget. budget yes. So <laughs> it, 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 it's... You I mean, said budget now was not I, enough. I don't even understand. And so there's no emphasis. There's clearly, they slash education, they slash, they slash health. health. And they put 27 billion to, to renovate, renovate, to renovate the, National the, National the National Assembly building. So you can find that the focus, the, the, the entire focus of the government in Nigeria is not about the people. No. It's, about, it's about protecting privileged politicians and right. people who are close to them. That's what, that's, what, that's what we fight for, that politicians and people in government fight for, even the civil servants fight for, to protect the interests of those who are close to them. And I think that is a very big thing. We see it now with healthcare. And, and other governments in other countries are using COVID or, uh, or this thing to revamp their own system. Yes. Rather, we yes. are using it to kill the existing one. You took it right out of my mouth. One would have thought that the federal, both the federal and the state mm. government will use the opportunity of the COVID-19 pandemic to begin to restructure, re-strategize, carry out reforms within the Even though they have admitted oh, that have, it is this bad. They didn't know it was this bad. You know, but most of us said it. I'll give you some it's not about minute. saying it. It's about taking steps. Here. What has Ogun State done? What has Lagos State done? Even thank Lagos State, they're trying. Or your state, all the states, Kogi. They're, they're sharing in domain. What are you doing concretely, actively, <laughs> to change the status quo, to change the present structure they're and in welfare domain. of those in the healthcare sector? But you uh, see, we're back to where we, where we were before COVID. Yeah. Uh, Sedu, you have something to say? Yes, yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm looking at this from another perspective. Okay. I, I agree that you know, there's a serious deficit in our health uh, sector. It's not just today, it's been there for a long time. Uh, but this pandemic has uh, created a unique opportunity for us. Um, what the government has done is created an opportunity for entrepreneurs and investors. In Nigeria today, one of the most lucrative sector that you can invest is health, uh, agri, and possibly education. Because these areas you could get uh, huge cheap, returns. You, know, you can get a whole lot of. So they've created that platform. It's now left for uh, businessmen and entrepreneurs to take advantage and build values on them. Uh, government cannot build all the hospitals. Okay. We need people to come in and invest in the healthcare. This is a good opportunity. All the so-called big men can fly out now. They have to invest a lot of money. A lot of money has come into that sector. They have to, you know, put why we're not seeing movement in that direction. But you see a whole lot of uh, the value chain is filled up now. You see people invest in different different areas, and that's very good for us. So, uh, looking at from, you know, it's the same narrative we've been talking about. Problem, problem, problem. But there is also opportunity brewing underneath, and I think we should also sing about that one. Fa fantastic, okay. uh, Sedu, quickly, quickly, um, 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 Rukawe, Rukawe yeah. is your advocacy, and since it's your advocacy, yeah. please permit us to just um, take a bite of it. <laughs> um, Sedu, <laughs> yeah. I wonder where this opportunity, where you're seeing them, because I am not seeing them, and I must say business, frankly, I yeah, I agree you. with you. I agree with you. You're a businessman. Without the basic infrastructure, no matter how much of opportunity you create, nobody will go, nobody's going to live a comfortable place where the infrastructures are valuable and come site, you know, business in your places where the infrastructures are epileptic. And that's one. We'll also look at security issues. As we speak now, we, now we're just uh, 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 being awoken to the reality of rape, not to talk of kidnapping and all of that. And yet, when we talk about enabling environment, government needs to provide incentive and enabling environment. Not just to say, oh, with COVID, government has provided uh, the platform. The World Health Organization, their statistics, last year's statistics says that in Nigeria, you have uh, uh, 10,000 uh, 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 10, people to one bed space. Not that people don't Sad. want to invest, but Sad. people want... A, a, a environment where there would be there will be re, not just return on investment but security of funds invested as we speak. And and so that said, on the healthcare, 
the uh, um, uh, uh, Secretary of the Government of the Federation came out to say with COVID, when he visited Gogola that hospital, he didn't know he was this bad. The first lady of the country said, head care, that's Asorok Clinic, that there is no Panadol mm -hmm. in Asorok. This is government owned. Government, nobody's even telling you build another one. With COVID, mm. we have hurriedly built up, you know, uh, makeshift yeah, hospitals. Yeah, donated as well. Because what are we doing? Are to those things, what are places we doing? No what are we doing to ensure okay. that those places that are without Panadol have Panadol, okay. and the ad hoc ones that we have, you know, are permanent? This, that's the question. Let me just say that healthcare is seriously underfunded in Nigeria. Recently, I was on this same Plus TV channel. And the VP had said he was going to give free health care through health care reforms. Meanwhile, the National Health Act that says 1% of dated revenue should go into health care at $10.567 trillion. Okay, we really don't have time. Naira, if we, we have time, I can give, give even Canada more statistics. Dollars. Bottom line is we're not funding health care. It's a vexatious <laughs> Yeah, I agree, I agree, it's, I agree. It's, 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 it's annoying ah, and frustrating. I agree, I agree. Well, I concur, today's advocacy is certainly not for the faint-hearted. In that vein, some issues simply cannot be ignored, no matter how distressing. I'm in confrontational mode after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.